Today on CityCast Chicago, Mayor Johnson makes some major shakeups in his administration. We've got more advice for new Chicagoans. And what is the most relaxing city in Illinois? Lead producer Simone Alise is here with me with insights and answers. It's Tuesday, August 15th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is What Chicago's Talking About. Morning, Simone. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. How are you? I am doing well. Um, It's always funny talking at the top of the week because you and I, I feel like right before we leave on Friday, we're like, what are the stories that are going to come out after we stop recording Friday? We have Mm -hmm. our weekend where we're trying to enjoy ourselves, trying to get away. But I feel you told me you was like, I feel like we might have to change some things late in the weekend. Uh, And just like that. Over the weekend, two of Chicago's most critical and criticized departments, the Department of Public Health and the Police Department, got changes in leadership from Mayor Brandon Johnson, uh, with Dr. Allison R. Woody, the city's top doc, being fired, and Larry Snelling was tapped to lead CPD. Um, I did not expect these two things to happen around the exact same time. Uh, But Simone, I I can't say I'm surprised with these decisions. Let's start with Dr. Arwitty, who we've spoken to twice on the pod. Can you remind listeners of Arwitty's background and her time as uh, commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health? So Arwitty was uh, appointed by former Mayor Lori Lightfoot in 2019 uh, to lead the health department um, and obviously sort of rose to prominence during the pandemic when she was in front of uh, everybody sort of talking about numbers uh, and talking about the latest cases. You know, Mm -hmm. I think she, you know, her her sort of tenure during covid I think has gotten a lot of positive attention, um, you know, sort of uh, particularly as other cities and states were relaxing, say, like masking uh, requirements and things like that. You know, Chicago held on to some of those restrictions a little bit longer in some ways, Mm -hmm. you know. There was a lot of debate over the reopening of businesses, particularly bars and restaurants, um, and kind of how that was supposed to go. Uh, I think her biggest criticisms during her tenure was um, the reopening of Chicago public schools, like when kids were returning to classes in like 2021. And uh, mm-hmm. and then again, in 2022, we saw this show up during the, the Omicron surge as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of pushback from teachers in particular on that plan to, to, for kids to return back to school. And of course, Johnson himself, a a former teacher, a former, uh, CTU Chicago teachers union organizer said on the campaign trail that that was one of the reasons that if he, you know, he said when, while he was running, like he was like, I'll probably replace Arwitty. Um, and so mm-hmm. sure enough, now at 5 p.m. on a Friday, it kind of came down that like, yeah, now it's now it's happening. Um, the other thing that already faced criticism for, too, was um, her uh, sort of not not wanting to reopen public health, uh, mental mm-hmm. health clinics, um, sort of supporting a, a, a more public private uh, kind of approach that Lightfoot had kind of tried to uh, enact uh, after after public public mental health clinics were closed under former Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Um, So those are just sort of some of the things that came under controversy. But it's sort of an interesting thing because Arwitty um, wasn't sort of universally disliked, I think, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the grand in the grand scheme of, of, you know, Chicago leaders under under the former mayor. Uh, I don't know that already was sort of the first one that people were like, yeah, yeah, she's got to go. Agree. And when I look at some of the criticisms, I wonder how much of them are people criticizing this sort of the mayor is my boss and so I will follow along, right? The you the mayor, the mayor, former mayor Lightfoot constantly said that they would take the recommendations of Dr. Allison R. Woody and the recommendations of our public health department and sort of make decisions based on that, make based on the data. But there was a lot of criticism about holding Lollapalooza in 2021. And it felt that this was a moment when the mayor really wanted this to go off. It was important for this sort of Chicago is opening back up. We're we're trying to make this return to normal. 
you know, and you got Dr. Allison R. Woody sitting there listening to Polo G with the mayor and people wondered, right? The mayor had this very contentious relationship with the Chicago Teachers Union when we we're talking about going back to schools. And Dr. Allison R. Woody stood by the mayor in, in, in some of those recommendations. And so I, I do wonder if, you know, a lot of these decisions were, you know, you know, more encouraged by the mayor than maybe Dr. Allison already wanted, or if now you're sort of standing on the consequences of of your decisions. And uh, it, it does feel like, you know, it happened in a way that, you know, I thought maybe I expected a little bit more of a farewell for the the top doc who, you know, was was at the helm of COVID. And, reg- and if you even if you don't agree with a lot of the choices that were made, Allison Arwood was out there willing to talk to every podcast and every uh, organization was was doing the Facebook Live, was out there in front of um, the people in front of social media, something that I don't think any other, you know, I don't think any other candidate prior to her would have expected to be a part of their daily and weekly job. And and so I thought at the least she would sort of be given a ceremonious um, time off. But I, I guess that was not in the cards. I agree. I think it was a little bit surprising. Uh, but uh, we'll see, as you say, we'll see now kind of what Johnson will be looking for in his next head of the public health department. Um, and what kind of re- will that relationship be different? Um, and so now at this point, what kind of relationship does Johnson intend to have with yeah. his uh, head of public health? We've been having a more robust conversation around environmental justice. And at one point, Dr. Allison R. Woody made the recommendation not to grant a permit to General Iron after about a month of protests, uh, hunger strikes. And I think that made it even clear um, how much the next leader is going to be asked to speak on those terms as well. You know, the people are more uh, aware that there's a 10 year uh, life expectancy gap between some of Chicago's wealthiest communities and some of, you know, the poorest, blackest and brown communities in our city. And public health uh, leaders going to have to present plans and solutions uh, to those problems as well, outside of just thinking about this department when there is a, a pandemic going on. And so I, I think we'll be following closely uh, around this next hiring process. Uh, one hiring process that has got a ton of attention over the last few months was that of the role of the city's next police superintendent. And late on Sunday, it came down that Mayor Brandon Johnson has tapped Chief Larry Snelling to lead the department moving forward. Uh, There was a press conference held yesterday. Uh, Simone, I don't think many people were surprised as the stories came out about the finalists that Snelling was a, a, a front runner here. As we've talked about on the show, there was a new process this sort of time around for selecting the police superintendent, right? We have this new uh, commission, the Civilian Police Oversight Commission that was in charge of sort of vetting, you know, the dozens of initial candidates and presenting finalists to Johnson. Um, and during that process, what the commission found was they, they held all these these public forums, several public forums. Again, this is very, very unusual for the search process uh, mm-hmm. for, for a for a head of police uh, in Chicago. Um, and during those forums, like sort of the, the one of the biggest themes among many was that everyday Chicagoans wanted someone from within the police department, um, wanted someone from within CPD to take the helm. There is sort of this history in Chicago of hiring outsiders and then, you know, the a feeling that they are not understanding the city and can't quite, you know, uh, they can't uh, build those relationships in the small window that it seems they have to, to, to do this job. They don't understand the streets and the relationship uh, coming into the job between the city and the, the, the history with the police department. It, it, it feels like we've set some candidates up, not for the most amount of success in a, what I argue, impossibly probably difficult job to do. Absolutely. And so Snelling, you know, again, it was a name that really emerged uh, as somebody who fit that really well. He is uh, from Englewood. He served as a as a commander of the Englewood Police District, um, you know, been with the department for 31 years, most recently as a chief for counterterrorism um, and, uh, you know, sort of had uh, has a lot of respect from the rank and file. Uh, of the police department, um, as well as, uh, you know, members of the community and, and, uh, you know, even members of the city council, right. Who, who were really, uh, uh, commending Snelling as a, as an option here. Um, and so it wasn't a huge surprise that, that he emerged, uh, on Sunday afternoon when, uh, <laughs> Johnson's administration announced the pick, um, 
but we we as you said we did hear from from Johnson and Snelling on Monday and I think uh Snelling sort of outlined what his top 3 priorities are um at now uh, as as the the pick for for superintendent one is officer wellness and training because that's the commodity that we're putting out into these communities we need to make sure that we have the the best trained and the most well officers and well taken care of officers when we put them out in the community. Because when these officers feel good about themselves and they feel good about their department, when they feel good about the job that they're doing, they'll feel good and, and great with the community. Secondly, violence. We, we really have to touch on violence. One of the things that I will tell you is that what I believe that we've forgotten everywhere are the victims of crime, the trauma that those victims deal with. And then our community, our community members have to have a stake. We have to bring them to the table. We have to talk to our community leaders. We have to, and we have to bring in those people that we don't normally talk to. And we have to make sure that we work collaboratively together in order to keep this city safe. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a, you know, pretty standard rundown for someone coming in. But if I can be a little cynical, you know, even in his response, right, police are first uh, in his mind. What he's most uh, prioritizing is how police like he did say training, but how they're taken care of, how they're seen, uh, how, what their work schedules look like, what the narrative is around him, you know, one of the things I didn't hear throughout the press conference, throughout Snelling's responses, though he seemed to be an advocate, he at one point he said, you know, all police officers will be community police. But it didn't seem like he was able to speak directly towards the distrust that exists between many people in Chicago and the police department based on years of personal and community interaction, based on police torture, based on police killings, based on police harassment. And I understand that his job is to come out there, uh, especially upon getting this job and sort of bring morale to this conversation. But I still want to hear somebody who doesn't just sort of use violence as this catch term um, for uh, you know, ultimately what he's saying is violence that takes place um, in, in uh, under-resourced communities. I, I do want to hear about the relationship, uh, you know, that police have towards this word of, of violence. Um, and, and and so I'm, I'm interested to see how uh, what Snelling's approach is moving forward, because he, he did seem to agree with Johnson's strategies of identifying um, and, and strategizing around, you know, tackling root causes. But, but but what does that look like in a city of such distrust? And I think what you're talking about also sort of gets at the central tension for what, you know, this hire means for a mayor like Brandon Johnson, right? Johnson was the progressive candidate um, and the progressive front runner who early on in his campaign there was a, the right, if we recall, there was sort of a lot of back and forth of does Johnson want to defund the police? Does he not want to defund the police? And sort of what we got to during the campaign was sort of, uh, well, we definitely want to look at the police budget. And then he's, there was sort of a walking back of, well, we also need to take care of officers and make sure officers are, are, are well. And there's sort of a, a school of thought in this hire that would say like, well, if you're hiring the top Chicago police boss, that person should be in charge of making sure the people who are doing the job, you know, are, are, are okay, that they're well, um, you know, that should be their, their main priority as that person's boss. Like, I mean, I think that's how we would feel about any of us selecting our own boss, right? Is we, we want them to, to, to make sure that we're okay. But, of course, we're talking about the Chicago police here. Um, and so on top of, right, you're talking about a department that is under a consent decree of federally mandated reforms um, that they are slow to meet and slow to improve upon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, 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 and so much of those reforms are around training a, a department that Snelling ran. And so how much of the criticism, not only from community members, but from, you know, a federal judge, not only needs to be leveled against sort of Chicago training in the abstract, but the individuals who led those efforts, who seem to be the experts testifying on those efforts. And, and you know, so I, so I do wonder how, you know, he will sort of look back on some of the departments he even led and, and, and find critical ways to improve them. 
And, you know, right now, Snelling and Johnson, of course, because Johnson just picked him, right, have a have a very good working relationship. It's it's, you know, sort of rosy right now. But what happens come budget season or what happens when there is another conflict uh, with with the police where, um, y- you know, where something bad happens, uh, the police have done something very questionable what does Johnson then do and to what degree are Snelling and Johnson going to be on the same page? Or, or we, we see the verbal back and forth between the, the police union and the Cook County State's mm-hmm. Attorney's Office and City Hall and, and the superintendent of police. Those four leaders were not on the same page in our previous administration. Each of them Correct. blamed other participants in that sort of that uh, that that fatal four way of, of who should hold the most blame for for Chicago's challenges, so to speak. And so I wonder what what is accountability as well as like you said, that relationship look like, you know, when, when people when when more data points come out over the next couple of months and years. And so uh, we, we are at the start of, of two huge shifts of leadership in two very critical departments. And now attention will turn to who will Johnson tap next to lead the Department of Public Health. And people will start to see how Snelling ingratiates himself amongst community members of the department uh, and everyone in between. This one is for all the project managers, software developers, and anybody else who might be looking for better ways to build teams and manage work. On September 14th in nearby Madison, Wisconsin, catch Scrum Day. It's a one-day conference all about the Scrum approach and other agile methods of project management. There'll be networking, breakout sessions, and presentations like the empowerment equation for product owners and the art of stopping the start. If any of these titles apply to you, that's executive, product owner, scrum master, or developer, I bet you don't want to miss Scrum Day in Madison next month. Get your tickets now at scrumday.org. Every week, we try to highlight what we're hearing from the listeners, people who are reaching out to our polls over at Hey Chicago, people who are calling our telephone number. If you like, Kobe, what's your telephone number? I didn't know I could put CityCast in my contacts, 773-780-0246. You all reach out to answer our questions, to tell us about something going on in your world. Uh, and we hear a lot from people who are relatively new from Chicago, like this voicemail that we got from Edwidge. Hi, Jacoby. My name's Edwidge. I've been listening to City Gas Chicago for probably about four months now. Um, I originally moved out of state and moved to Chicago, so I'm very new to the city and it's been my first couple weeks here. And I just want to say, like, I really love listening to City Cast Chicago. As a new emerging professional, I'm like 20-something year old in the city. I'd really like to know what are your recommendations when it comes to going out, having a good time, and also building community amongst Black people. I live in Old Town, which is not the most diverse neighborhood when it comes to building community, but thank you. Man, shout out to Edwidge for reaching out to us. Um, man, coming back to Chicago after, you know, six years of being in school, there, there was, even though I could still call myself sort of a lifelong Chicagoan, born and raised on the South Side, there was still a feeling like, well, I've never actually experienced this city as an adult, as someone living on my own, sort of paying bills and, and trying to figure out my way. And you lived in And you lived in Wicker when you came back, didn't you? Yeah, I I went, you know, when I first came back, like so many, I was with uh, my grandmother in Calumet Heights for a few months trying to get adjusted. Then I moved into Wicker and then I came to Hyde Park, then South Shore, back to Hyde Park. Um, I had a friend who stayed in Uptown who for a while was was on her couch for a little bit. But one of the things that I was trying to figure out is this exact question that Edwidge has, which is how do I get involved in the city? How do I take interest? And honestly, one of my answers, and, and it might sound basic, is social media, like following cool organizations, right? Whether it's community organizations, whether it's poetry collectives, whether it's organizing spaces. I started to see who are some of the people liking those posts? What are some of the events that they were doing? And I started realizing, oh, there are storytelling shows. There are poetry open mics. There are sort of mix and mingles, you know, from from following cool DJs. They'll put you on to some of the places that they're playing in the city. Um, and, and that has been a great opportunity for me. In addition to following outlets like The Tribe, who are tapped into what are some of those events that are going on throughout the city. 
The other recommendation I would make is um, finding some kind of event that is regular, that's happening yes. at the same time every week, same time every month. Um, for me, it ended up being Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it doesn't have to be that for you. Uh, <laughs> it could be uh, for me. Like it was grown folk stories. Yeah. Yeah. It could be it could be a, a nature walk, but finding those groups that are meeting on the regular it could be you know it could be a karaoke thing. It could be a, sort of a, an art class. That was the other thing that I did is I ended up taking an art class and have joined a studio that um, mm-hmm. is really is really really fun and cool. But I want to know if folks out there have some events or or groups or or you know organizations that edwidge or the rest of us should check out how are you building community dear listener let us know by uh calling or uh texting us at 773-780-0246 we really want to uh put everybody on to, to some good stuff going on so call text 773-780-0246 before we get out of here today, every week, Simone and I get tons of these rankings in our inbox. And the most recent one we got um, comes on the heels of National Relaxation Day, which is today. Long Starter ranked 2023's most relaxed cities and maybe a little bit shocked by the list. Uh, some f- some familiar names, some places I've never been. Uh, but Chicago did make the top 40, but it was very far from the top city in Illinois. Simone, what do we learn from Lawn Starter's rankings? All right. So the number four most relaxed city in the country uh, by, by this metric, Naperville, Illinois. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I I saw this and I went I I I was like what? Eh? Naperville okay uh, I I have sort of no opinions about Naperville I'll be honest <laughs> sorry to all of our Naperville listeners out there uh, I live very far away uh, Chicago came in at number thirty nine um, mm. it's very middle of the pack very very middle of the pack in terms of relaxation but I gotta say Jacoby I I was like oh this will be like a fun thing silly thing to talk about and then I went and looked at the methodology for how they determined mm-hmm. most relaxed um and it's it's pretty much a proxy for like how resourced your city is uh mm-hmm. to be honest it's a lot of like it is. It, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a lot of like, oh, how many mental health professionals do you have living in your city? Um, you know, how what's what is the rate of depression like? If the rate of depression is really high, it's probably not as a re- relaxed a city. Um, even uh, even income is, you know, financial well-being is one of mm-hmm. the metrics that they track. And so in places that are wealthier, they rank a little higher. Uh, and if Naperville you, ranked first in that regard. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, life, things like life expectancy, things like, uh, you know, various health issues, rates of of, uh, you know, sort of adult binge drinking. Um, these are all fact, you know, work stressors. How long is your work day and your commute? These are all things that that were part of this ranking. And so um, as we mm-hmm. talk about a lot on this show, these are also all things uh, that indicate, like I said, how well resourced your your town or city is uh, or neighborhood. And um, yeah, which makes this uh, less fun and silly than I had hoped. <laughs> right. I will say the one thing I take enjoyment from in these rankings is trying to pinpoint where other city cast cities fall on these rankings because it just becomes an easy thing for us to fight about in the slack. And there were three city cast cities in front of us, including Madison, Wisconsin, ranked 15th, uh, Portland, Oregon in 24th, and Salt Lake City, Utah in 29th place. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask our, our colleagues over in those cities, do they think they their rankings are deserved? Do they think they should be higher? Do they think they should be lower? I don't know. I, f- I find Chicago outside of the, you know, constant uh, reductive conversations to be a, a, a very relaxing place. I'm, I'm Right. Did they see Lake Michigan? Have they seen it? Like it's, I mean, we, yeah. we rank decently in things to do. Right. We yes. was like 18th or something in things to do. But it was it was some of the other things. Work stressors, 174th. Environmental stressors, 193rd. Social stressors, stressors, 111th. So, you know, I think it's just the things that come in being a sort of industrial, uh, you know, neoliberal city. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's hard out here. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it it be like that. I don't know. We find we find ways to relax. I think I had. I mean, I t- I talked about this uh on Friday about how I was gonna have this amazing nap. Um, and you know, I I I did. I don't. I, I feel like. They should measure napping, I guess. I don't know how many people are napping in <laughs> Chicago. That's the conclusion I'm coming to real, like right now in real time. Is uh, that's, that's all I can say about it. Let us know your thoughts by reaching out to us at 773-780-0246. If you haven't saved the number, add us to your contacts. Simone, do it right I appreciate now. you making it. We know you're on your phone. You're listening on your phone. Just do it right now. I don't understand why you wouldn't. <laughs> So, well, that is great advice. Thank you for all of the insight and answers from today's conversation. Uh, I feel like people are going to be hearing from you pretty soon on the podcast. So we'll talk soon. <laughs> talk to you soon. To learn more about the topics covered in today's episode, head over to the show notes and make sure you subscribe to our daily newsletter, Hey Chicago. Subscribe now at chicago.citycast.fm. You don't want to miss tomorrow's episode where we're bringing back a very good CityCast Chicago friend. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.